everyone. Thanks for tuning to Sin's Workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. So, today we are going to be discussing the Society for Soulless Girls by Lauren Stephen. Let me just preface this podcast by saying I appreciate what the author was trying to do. Unfortunately, um, I hated this book now that I've thought about it. You know, it's funny. It's one of those books where I first started it and I was just like, okay, it's not too bad. And when I finished it, I was like, I really wanted more of it. And then as I sat and thought about it and thought about my life choices (laughs) and wrote my review, I got to the point where I was just like, okay, this is a terrible, terrible book. First of all, if you go on Goodreads, in the synopsis, this is what it says. A dark and funny YA thriller with a supernatural twist. I did not laugh once in this book. This book was not funny at all. Um, there were some good moments early on, like when Lottie... Um, not Lottie. When Alice um, punches the guy because he pretty much assaults her and breaks his nose. I was like, okay, you know, I like that. I I like that. I thought, okay, this is going to be a book I want to read. But then I got to more of the story and I read more of it and it was just abysmal. It's supposed to be the supernatural twist. It's supposed to be a sort of feminist take on Jekyll and Hyde. You know, I love Jekyll and Hyde. I have read it. Um, I appreciate it for what it's worth, you know. It's an interesting story. (sighs) But this was just a very poor execution on it. You know, it really does attack the whole stereotype that women rage is somehow inexcusable. That to be a woman, you must be proper and polite and keep your mouth shut and behave and you must be seen and not heard you know it really does explore the idea that woman rage is inexcusable you know but it's not it's just it's why is it so wrong for a woman to get angry to be emotional um it's not so again that's why I appreciate what the author was going for but the characterization was very poor um Lottie and Alice are supposed to be love interests, and I just wasn't feeling it. There was a disconnect for me, mainly because I really couldn't connect to the characters. Um, Alice has a lot of anger issues, so she finds a spell book for a ritual that is about soul splitting. This is where our Jekyll and Hyde aspect comes into play. She does the spell, and she becomes a nicer, more socially acceptable version of herself. And then... Every, you know, month, she has, if she doesn't do the ritual in time, her mur, like, the, her darker half comes back with a murderous vengeance. Like, it needs to kill. You know, just think of the snake in Chamber of Secrets. It's going, kill, kill. That's basically what it is for her. And she does end up killing someone. You don't really see it. It really is off script. But you know she probably killed this person does the spell again and another month passes and her rage comes back and what happens is she kills a cat with her bare hands that was a very uncomfortable scene for me um and that was probably the point of the story where I was like okay I really don't like this story you know I'm not really a fan of this of the storytelling you know I can't really connect to the characters and I feel like it crossed a line um I'm one of those people I'm not a fan of animal violence in movies I'm not really a fan of I don't like animal violence at all um I don't like it really being it's one thing to allude to it I I read a book it alluded to it and it broke my heart, but this was something entirely different because you're seeing it. And I was just like, oh my God, um, I was not, 
a fan of, uh, I'm not a fan of animal abuse and animal cruelty. I'm really not. Um, and I think a lot of us are. So that's where the book crossed the line. Because I think you really could have shown her murderous rage without crossing the line. It's like, we get it. We already know that she has these murderous instincts because she does the whole spell. I think the author crossed the line. And I also feel like there was a little bit more devotion to Alice and the supernatural versus Lottie, which was another disconnect for me. Because Lottie is trying to go, she goes to this college because there were some murders and she knew one of the girls that was murdered and she wants to investigate it, right? So that does bring her in line to Alice because it's all connected. I really wanted more development as well as more characterization when it came to Lottie because I felt like she was just kind of there to just be the love interest of Alice, which is why I couldn't connect to this love interest, to this LGBTQ romance, because there was really very little development on Lottie. You know, you have all this development for Alice and the supernatural aspect of the story, but you're really not focusing on the characters. You're exploring, you know, feminism and women rage and how it is shunned and how it should not be shunned. You know, it's the expectations and the pressure women feel to kind of go into this box when there shouldn't be a box in the first place. So again, I appreciate what the author was doing. I just didn't like it. Um, I don't think it was well written enough, which is funny because she also won the um, comedy woman. She, she was a winner of the comedy woman in print prize, you know, so she is an award winning author. I just don't think this story was up to par. Um, it says funny. It's not funny at all. At all. Definitely dark, but it's not funny. I didn't laugh at all. I didn't, you know, thinking back, I'm like, what part of this book was supposed to be funny? Because nothing about it was funny to me. Um, in fact, it was dark. It was a little dry. And it crossed a line that I wished it hadn't crossed. So on that now, I have to give this book two out of five stars. So when I finished reading it initially, I gave it three. It's going back down to a two because it's one of those books that I think about and it just kind of makes me kind of bleh and a little upset, but not upset in a good, in a good way where I'm just like emotionally invested. It makes me upset that I wasted my time reading it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's going to get two out of five stars for me, but you know, to each their own, if you want to go ahead and purchase the book, I will include links in the description below on where to purchase it. And on that note, I hope you all will continue to support me here by liking the podcast, subscribing to the channel, and sharing it with all your book-loving friends. You can also become a supporter and buy me a coffee, Kofi, Patreon, by purchasing one of my handmade candles, or by following any of my social media platforms. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and as always, happy reading.